Hey, this is Jonathan with Jonathan Howard Guitar, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick tutorial over the basics for Logic Express 9. So to start out, you go ahead and open up Logic, and you do a new project, and generally I'll use an empty project from the templates. And right away, a box will open for a new track and give you the option for the number of tracks, the type of track, the format, the input, the output, along with a few other things. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with a basic track. And right away, a few things pop up over to the left, like your volume for your track and your score, along with these inserts, which are for things like EQ and other effects like delay and reverb and distortion, along with the things like the new pedal board and amp designer, which I will get to later. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you the media library. And for those of you who have used GarageBand, this should be very familiar. And they actually decided to import the GarageBand tracks, which I thought was pretty cool, along with putting in a bunch of new ones which are specifically used in Logic. And these are different tracks that you would use for based off of the type of music you're playing, based off of the type of sound you're looking for, and it alters the different things in the effects. So say I go into vocals, and as I stated earlier in those inserts, as you change these, it changes the different types of inserts for the different types of sounds you're looking for. And in this one, for example, it has these four inserts, and this small image here is the preview for the what the EQ looks like on this channel. So if I go ahead and open up EQ, this is the general EQ that is used for vocals in this program, but there are also several other forms of EQ that you can use. And this one is very, very easy to use, and it's very easily attainable for the different types of sounds you're looking for. And there's never, I've never had any problems with it. It's very easy to get the sounds you're looking for. When you go and you click on a new insert, these things pop up which are all the different things that you can put into these and use for your tracks. So there's a huge variety of things that you can use for each thing. There's a bunch of different ones under each one. And what I'm going to show you next is a quick demonstration of the amp designer and pedal board. So I just went ahead and created a new track. and. I'm going to go ahead and show you the amp designer really quick, and I'm going to elaborate on this in a future video, but this is just to give you a feel for what it's like. So this is what pops up after you open it, and it's very fun to mess around with this. I messed around in it for several hours just mixing and matching the different amp heads and cabinets and all the different effects on them and the pedal boards and stuff like that, and it's very fun. Um, there's, It's very authentic and has a very good, clean sound for something digital so I, I was pretty I was very impressed with the sounds coming from this I have also used the amp designer for my own songs and recordings for guitar and they work they work very well like I had said the sounds in this are very authentic they sound very similar to um, most of the real life tube amps which is it's very impressive um, and it makes it a lot easier for musicians who can't afford the different types of amps to have a variety under their belt and have all the different types of sound that they really are looking for and I'm gonna go I'm gonna elaborate on both the amp designer and pedal board in another video but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the pedal board so in the pedal board it's like the pedals that we've seen dozens of times throughout the course of our lives. But up here at the top, there's a filter. And you can go ahead and select and filter out the ones that you're looking for. So say if I want this delay, I can just go ahead and click and drag it over into the box. And just like with the amp designer, you can move these knobs around. And they sound they these work very well, and it, you can push all the buttons and stuff like that, and move all the different things. But um, just like with the amps, it's very nice to have all these things around when you are looking for th these types of effects. So the next thing I'm going to show you 
is Howl to record, and this button here is Ready Record. And after you click it, a box pops up of where to save the track. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this one so I can show you. And once that R is lit up red, you are ready to record, and you will be able to hear that track coming through whatever speakers and output you're using. And as you can see down here, there are the levels being monitored. So those are all the basic things that I'm going to show for now. But stay tuned for next time, and I'm going to elaborate on a bunch of these things and give you a better understanding on how to record in this program. Thanks for watching. See ya.